in this session we will move on to the artificial recharge of ground water so artificial recharge means recharging the ground water okay uh, artificially that means uh, if uh, you all know that we are extracting water from the deep aquifers uh, through wells okay so as time passes what will happen all the water below the ground get depleted okay uh, you have to note one point that uh, a drop of water needs a lot a number of years for reaching the ground water okay at the same time we are extracting uh, uh, many cubic meters of water within a second through the wells so what will happen to the ground water it will get depleted at that time what we can do is we have to artificially recharge the ground water by means of some uh, modern method or, uh, methods okay so that is a process and another important thing is um, as we are storing water above the surface there may be some losses example uh, evaporation losses will be there and many other losses will be there runoff losses infiltration losses etc will be there so uh, if we are storing uh, water beneath the ground then there will be less number of losses and also the water will be more purer more pure than that of uh, surface water because it is uh, filtered through many layers of soil and it will get purified when it reaches the ground so it will have more purity so for because of all these factors uh, we are uh, promoting artificial recharge so here we can see the main uh, definition of artificial recharge which is given by toad in 1980 so toad has uh, defined the artificial recharge as augmenting the natural movement of surface water into underground formations by some method of construction by spreading of water or by artificially changing natural conditions so we will uh, see the definition again okay uh, when we are explaining all the methods we, we, you can understand what are the different uh, terms which are used in this definition okay so this is about artificial recharging of groundwater now uh, the methods uh, which are followed to recharge the groundwater uh, depends upon different factors it depends upon the local topography the geologic and soil conditions the amount of water to be recharged the ultimate use of water the value of land water quality etc the local topography means uh, the slope of the land um, the type of the soil etc so if the slope of the land is higher if the top uh, natural slope of the land is higher then what will happen the water has a tendency to flow from one place to another so at that time if you are recharging what will happen the, we are recharging water at a place and that water will flow to another place so that will happen and the second thing is geologic and soil conditions uh, we have to analyze the type of soil before recharging the groundwater so it depends upon the soil you all know that if the soil is coarser then what will happen the water will pen infiltrate more okay so according to the geologic conditions the movement of water will change and that will depend on the recharging of groundwater and the third one is the amount of water to be recharged uh, for example if you are if we if we have to if we have a large amount of water uh, to be recharged that means if you are if the rainfall is very high um, then what will happen more amount of water will be there we have to store all these water in the ground in that case we need large capacity structures for recharging at the same time if the amount of water needed to be recharged is very less that is uh, there is a small amount of rainfall uh, is there then what will ha what we will do we will construct a very small capacity structure for recharging the crowd the ultimate use of water so for what purpose the water recharged water is used so that also depends on the type of that also is a factor which depends on the type of recharging structure which is chosen and the value of land and the water quality and climate all these parameters affects the type of the method we have uh, chosen now uh, we'll move on to the advantages of uh, artificial recharge there are many advantages uh, one is no large storage structure is needed uh, while in case of surface water we need very large storage structures like dams in case of groundwater no need of such large structures we only need small structures like wells 
and uh, the second advantage is structures required are small and cost effective that i have already explained and the third one is enhance the dependable yield of wells and hand pumps so we have to enhance the yield of wells and hand pumps through artificial recharging uh, so uh, this is one of the advantage of artificial re re uh, recharging and the fourth advantage is negligible losses that also i have explained already in case of uh, surface storage evaporation losses will be higher but in case of uh, groundwater storage the losses will be lesser because the water is not in contact with atmosphere or temperature and the final advantage is improved water quality due to dilution of harmful chemicals of course the water is moving through or filtering through many layers of the soil and uh, finally it will be uh, get filtered through all these layers and the water will be more pure than that of surface water so these are the advantages and uh, another advantages are no displacement of local population is needed in case if you are constructing a surface storage structure just like dam we have to evacuate all the population around that uh, structure okay so in case of artificial recharging no need of such things reduction in cost of energy for lifting water that is one advantage and it utilizes the surplus surplus surface runoff which otherwise drains off so these are the main advantages now there are many methods of uh, artificial recharging uh, generally they are classified into two methods direct method and indirect methods so the direct method uh, are of again two types surface method and subsurface method we will see in detail all these methods here you can see there are mainly direct method and indirect method in direct method there are surface methods and subsurface methods in surface methods there are six methods percolation tank flooding channel spreading stream augmentation ditch and furrow system contour bund etc in case of subsurface method recharge wells duck wells pits and shaft injection wells subsurface dikes or groundwater dams etc there in case of indirect method induced recharge technique and aquifer modification techniques are there so you all know what is direct and indirect direct means which is directly used indirect means which has an indirect impact okay in case of surface and subsurface methods surface methods are uh, um, in in case of surface method we are constructing some structures on the surface for augmenting the groundwater in case of subsurface method the structure will be under the ground or uh, we are uh, constructing some or methodologies or some structures just below the soil in order to augment the groundwater so these are the differences we will see each of them first one is direct method in direct method first one is surface method in surface method again the first one is percolation tank so you all know what is a percolation tank percolation means the vertical movement of water vertical movement of water through the soil up to the ground water it is it is uh, somewhat equal to infiltration but infiltration will be only up to the root zone of the plants whereas percolation will be up to the ground water so that is the difference so percolation tanks are the tanks or dams which are constructed without any lining at the bottom okay if there is a lining what will happen percolation will not occur in case if we need uh, the process of percolation to happen uh, we have to remove the lining we have to not provide any lining at the bottom portion if we, uh, so such a dam is known as percolation tank okay it is very effective in alluvial area as well as in areas with hard rock this method is very useful in providing continuous recharge after the monsoon mm, if in monsoon season and in rainy seasons what will happen the water will be continuously filled in the percolation tank it will, and it will be continuously percolated down the earth the second method is flooding flooding is just similar to that of percolation tank in this case we can see a figure here so here there is a diversion there is a river flowing okay just assume a river flowing uh, which is shown in uh, shown at the bottom that is a river and at 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 a point we have given a diversion structure the diversion structure is used to change the 
what is that path of the river just to change or divert the path of the river so the river is a portion of the river is diverted to a sedimentation tank where all the sediments in the river are sedimented or uh, deposited at the bottom and the remaining water that pure water is allowed to uh, move to a recharge basin the recharge basin is surrounded by some structures okay in such a way that the water will be get ponded in that basin okay so here in the in the recharge basin what will happen the water will be ponded whenever the water is ponded somewhere what will happen the water has a tendency to move downwards or infiltrate or percolate so that is the principle used in the method of flooding we are increasing the time for uh, i mean we are uh, giving the water some time for getting infiltrated and the third method is channel spreading this is uh, another method uh, here you can see a figure so this is a river uh, in that river you can see l like structures so that l like structures or bunds are constructed in the river what is the purpose of this if there are no such structures in the river what will happen the water will flow straight and it will finally reach the destination wherever it is a sea or a ocean or a, something else okay at that time the water will just flow and if you are creating such l like structures what will happen the flowing path of the water the travel travel path of the water will get increased the time uh, that what will happen the water water will get more time to pass through the river when it gets more time what will happen the water will have again the tendency to infiltrate so here we are giving more time to the water to get infiltrated so that is the principle of channel spreading we are giving the water more time to infiltrate now the fourth one is stream augmentation in this case what we will do is we will collect the seepage water seepage what do you mean by seepage the horizontal movement of water below the ground in case of dams and all what will happen if there is a leakage uh, there will be some leakage from the side walls below the ground so such type of horizontal movements below the ground is known as seepage so in case of a stream augmentation what we will do is we will collect the seepage water and it will uh, that seepage will be used for natural recharging so we can just read the sentence seepage from natural stream or river is artificially increased by putting some series of check dams across the river or stream so the seepage is increased and it will be collected for recharging the groundwater and uh, another system is ditch and furrow system in this case the similar principle is used uh, like in uh, uh, that uh, what is that channel spreading okay so uh, here what we will do is in some places where there is in some topography uh, there will be uneven terrain that means uh, some hills will be there some slopes slopes will be there some uh, depressions will be there like that uneven topography is there in some places in that case what will happen if rain comes uh, water will be collected in this ditches and uh, the ditches uh, there will not be any flow of water so what will happen the water will get ponded and the water will get infiltrated in time so this principle is used in this ditch and furrow system we will make some ditches and some furrows at places so inside the ditches if the rain comes the water will be collected and the water is allowed to get infiltrated so this is the principle used here and there are different kinds of ditches mainly two lateral lateral ditch uh, pattern and uh, dendritic dendritic pattern okay so in the lateral ditch pattern it will be just like the herringbone system in your drainage herringbone system so there will be a central channel and many lateral channels will be there which are uh, coming in a parallel lines which are uh, designed in a parallel lines so that are known as lateral ditch pattern and uh, there is another one dendritic pattern dendritic pattern means uh, it will be just like the branches of the trees so there will be a center uh, channel and uh, both the sides there will be uh, branches like the branches of the trees so it will not be it will not be parallel or straight line okay it will be just like curved lines curved curved small channels so that is dendritic pattern now another one is contour pattern 
you all know what is a contour it is the line joining equal elevation points so uh, the ditches which are formed along the contour of the area is known as contour so uh, i mean contour ditches so such type of ditches are formed to allow the water to get infiltrated okay so this is the thing and the final one in direct method surface method direct surface method is contour bund you all know what is a contour bund uh, we will form some bunds along the slope of the uh, hills so what will happen the water will be collected at the upstream side of these bunds and that water will be given some time to get infiltrated through the bund or th through the soil so that water will be collected as groundwater and uh, it is uh, it allows the recharge of the groundwater so now we will move on to the subsurface methods there are many subsurface methods so uh, all uh, the things that we have seen now is above the surface okay now we are moving on to the subsurface methods which are used to recharge the groundwater the first one is recharge wells so these are just like wells okay the uh, similar to the, our duck wells our tube wells etc can be used as recharge wells in summer season and all what will happen all these wells get uh what devoid of water in that cases we can use this wells for uh, recharging groundwater okay so abandoned tube wells can be used for recharging water into the aquifer so here you can see a figure of uh, recharging the well uh, here in natural cases what we will do is um, you can see the cone of depression here in natural cases the cone of depression will be an inverted cone in case of i mean in case of discharging the cone of depression will be an inverted cone in this case you can see the cone of depression as a, a, a natural cone it is not inverted because this is a recharging this is uh, the cone of depression for a recharging well now the other uh, subsurface method is a duck well so duck wells can also be used as artificially recharging structures uh, similar way okay it can be used in a similar way and the third one is pits and shafts we will explain um, i'll explain it uh, with the help of a figure in case of recharge pits the diameter of the pit will be higher we, we will make a pit first the diameter of the pit will be higher and the height of the pit will be lower and uh, what will happen uh, the water will come inside the pit and it will be allowed to infiltrate in case of recharge shaft uh, there will be small diameter holes with which uh, which ha has higher depth so such type of uh, uh, shafts are used uh, to recharge deep aquifers okay small diameter and uh, higher depth so this is the explanation of this one and uh, the second one is injection wells not second one the third the fourth one fourth one is injection wells injection wells is nothing but uh, in all the above cases we are not forcing the water we are just using the gravity flow of water for recharging the ground water but in this case we will use a pump to inject water into the aquifer we will use a pump uh, a high uh, what is that high force pump is used to inject the water into the aquifer we are forcing the water into the aquifer in all the above methods we have used the uh, just gravity flow of water and the next method is subsurface dikes of ground or groundwater dams i can explain it by use of by use of a figure so here you can see there is a terrain an uneven terrain having a slope so in this case we will uh, what we will do is um, at the bottom of the slope we will just uh, make a hole and we will fill it with some impermeable materials so in that case what will happen water from the top of the hill will move down and it will be restricted at the point where we are uh, we have uh, filled the impermeable materials so what will happen when the flow is hindered the water will have a tendency to infiltrate so like that the water will, will get infiltrated into the ground now we will move on to the indirect methods there are main two main uh, indirect methods one is induced recharge induced recharge means we can uh, i can explain it by means of a figure here there is an open channel i mean an open channel or a river or anything and uh, in the close proximity of the open channel there is a well so we need 
the water in the open channel to recharge the groundwater because when uh, the water is stored above the ground what will happen many losses will be there so when we need this water in the ground not on the surface we need that water in the ground so what we will do is we will induce the recharge how we will induce the recharge there is a well nearby this uh, water source we will pump out maximum amount of water from the well okay at a higher rate that water we can use for irrigation domestic purpose etc so when we uh, pull out all the water when we extract all the water what will happen the bottom of the well has a tendency have a tendency to suck the water from the nearby surfaces so it will suck the water from this ground and it will recharge the bottom portion uh, it will suck the water from this uh, river or this uh, water source and it will be uh, given to the ground bottom portion of the well so the groundwater recharge occurs indirectly here and uh, another method is aquifer modification method in this case what we will do is we will modify the aquifer we will increase the capacity of the aquifer to store the water this is an indirect method of recharging so for that we will use many methods pore blasting hydro fracturing well jacket uh, fracture seal cementation pressure injection grouting etc will use so first one is bore blasting uh, in this case we will blast the aquifer what happened when we will blast the aquifer the fracture uh, velocity i mean uh, the fractures in the aquifer increases when the fractures in the if the aquifer has a hole i mean if it is an unconfined aquifer what will happen when we blast the aquifer the unconfined portions that is that impermeable uh, materials will uh, will be destructed so at that time what will happen the capacity of the aquifer increases and more water will be extracted from the aquifer so that is the case in bore blasting and the next one is hydro fracturing instead of uh, explosive uh, we will use the force of water to uh, increase the capacity of the aquifer here water is in injected at very high pressure to widen the existing fracture of the lock and the another one method is well jacket or jacket well method it is used to increase the uh, yield of a duck well in this method defective diameter of the well is increased by drilling small diameter holes around the well in a circular pattern so there is a well there is a well without any ceiling so we will drill small small holes at the bottom in a circular pattern uh, through the side walls of the well so what will happen more water will come into the well from these holes so that is known as jacket well technique and another one is fractural seal cementation and pressure injection grouting this technique is used to control the outflow from an aquifer so uh, uh, in case if there are some fractures in the aquifer there are some fractures in the aquifer at the surfaces for example in some cases you can see some springs springs you all know what are springs um, springs are uh, uh, the water will come out in some places from the ground without applying any force without uh, installing some pump and all water will come out continuously so that are known as springs so if we um, if the water is uh, coming out continuously what will happen the water will be wasted okay so in that cases uh, we will uh, what is that we will grout all that holes all such holes will be filled or grouted or sealed by means of cement grouting okay uh, so at that time what will happen the pressure inside the aquifer will increase and uh, the water more water will be extracted into the aquifer or collected into the aquifer so that is the case thank you